Welcome to Chapter 3, Video 1, Truth Tables. In this video we're going to learn basic truth table construction and how to apply the truth table method to determine various semantic properties of formulas, sets of formulas, and arguments. Now first, look over at the upper right. We have the characteristic truth tables laid out. They show what the value of compound statement is given the values of its subcomponents. Now take an arbitrary formula, something like the following. We can calculate a value for this formula given certain values for its atomic components. Remember the atomic components are just the statement letters, the smallest bits. And since this is a truth functional formula, the truth value of the whole will be determined by the truth value of those atomic components and how they're put together with the truth functional connectives. So just for a quick example, suppose we assume C to be true, B to be false, and D to be false. How do we calculate the value of the whole? Well, the main connective of this formula is right here, the conditional arrow, and that's the value that we're going to calculate last, because in order to know that value, we need to know the value of the consequent, which we do, and we need to know the value of the antecedent, which we don't quite know yet. In order to determine the value of the antecedent, this portion between the parentheses, we need to know the value of both conjuncts because the connective there is a conjunction. Now of course we know the value of C but we need to calculate the value of not B. Of course this is very simple. If B is false then not B is going to be true. The next step then, now this true is representing the value of the whole formula not B. So we don't really need that F anymore. In order to calculate the value for this conjunction, we pay attention to the T here for the not B and of course the T for the not C. And then those two values feed in to the conjunction. And of course, as you can see over here, when both components of a conjunction are true, the whole thing is true. So that gives us a T right here. Now we know the value of the antecedent, so we look here and here to calculate the value of the main connective of the whole formula, our arrow. And again, if you look over the right, just as a reminder, when we've got a true antecedent and a false consequent, get false for the conditional. So what this tells us is that given this basic assignment of truth values to the components, C as true, B as false, D as false, the value of the whole turns out to be false. Now this isn't terribly interesting, but what we can do is set up a method for calculating the value of the whole for any possible values of the subcomponent. So let's actually move this over a little bit. What we're about to tr produce is called a truth table for this formula. And the way we do that is we draw a line underneath the formula like so and a vertical line next to the formula like so. And then in this area here we're going to list each of the atomic components of the original formula. And we're going to list them in alphabetical order. B, C, and D. Now, given that we have three distinct atomic components, each taking two possible truth values, there are going to be eight possible combinations of truth values. And in order to display those 
eight possible combination of truth values. We do the following. We start here at the rightmost column and alternate T's and F's for eight rows. Like so. Then we move one column to the left and alternate by twos. So we go T, T, F, F, T, T, F, F. And then we go out one more time and we alternate by fours. So four T's four F's. Now this gives us eight truth value assignments for the three distinct atomic components in the original formula. These are all the possible combinations of truth values to three components, our three components being B, C, and D. The next step is to copy these columns, which we call the basis columns, over to the other side of the table underneath their corresponding letters. So C alternates by two, so here we're going to have T, T, F, F, T, T, F, F. We copy the B column over, that is going to go T, 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 F, 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 F. And then we'll copy the D column over, which alternates T, F, T, F, T, F, T, F, like so. Now, just like when we calculated the one set of values, the last place we're going to put values in is right here underneath the conditional arrow because that's the main connective. And in order to determine the value for that, we need to determine the values of the subcomponents. So essentially the process is building from the smallest components out to the whole. We have the values for D just like before. So there's no real work to do there, but we need to find the values for the conjunction first, and in order to do that, we need to find the values for the negation. Of course, this is quite easy. The negation just inverts the truth value, so if B is 4 T's and then 4 F's, not B is going to be 4 F's. and then four T's. And essentially we're now done with this column. We don't need it anymore. In order to calculate the values here, we're going to look here and here. So the only time a conjunction is true is when both components are true. So as long as we see a false on either the left or right hand side, we can write a false under the conjunction sign. Here we go. There are two trues there and two trues there, but false is the rest of the way. So again, we don't need this column anymore and we don't need this column anymore. Now to calculate the value of the whole, of course, we're looking at the value for the whole antecedent and the value for the consequent. And these two columns are going to give us our calculation under the main connective. So we're dealing with a conditional here, and the conditional is true in every case except where you have true antecedent and false consequent. So with a false antecedent, we'll have a true. Another false antecedent gives us a true again and again. Now we have a true antecedent and a true consequent. That's true. True antecedent and false consequent. That's false and then two false antecedents gives us true and true. And the last step here is we want to put a box under the column. We want to put a box around the column under the main connective so we can see clearly what the value of the whole is. Now what we've got is we can determine the value of this whole formula based on the value of its components. So take a look at say the fifth row here, when B is false and C and D are both true, we know that this whole statement is true. Or more interestingly, suppose we wanted to know what would possibly make this formula false. 
Well, it is false in this one case, and in order to do that, we would have to assume that B is false, C is true, and D is false. Let's take a slightly simpler case, a sentence with only two atomic components. Here's the formula. We can draw our horizontal line and our vertical line. Now we only have two distinct atomic components. We'll list them alphabetically with two elements and two possible values, true or false. There's only going to be four combinations of assignments of truth values. So we need to only go down four rows. This pattern should look familiar. It's the pattern that appears in the basis columns for the characteristic truth tables. Now, the first step at this point is to locate the main connective, and that is right here. That will be our last column. All right, we can copy over the basis columns. And in order to calculate the value of the hook, the main connective, we need the value of the biconditional, or double arrow, first. And that's simple to do. When each side, when the two sides match, you get a true, and when they don't match, you get a false. And looking at that column, we just invert it for the hook, so it goes T, F, F, T, so this one's going to go F, T, T, F. And we can box that column since it's the main connective. Now, you may have guessed that the more distinct atomic components we have, the larger the table is going to be. In general, if you have n distinct atomic components, then the number of rows in the truth table is going to be 2 to the n. So when we had 2 in our second example there, 2 to the 2 equals 4, and we had 3 in our first example there, 2 to the 3rd equals 8, and if you are unlucky enough to come across one with 4 distinct atomic components, you would have to have a 16 row truth table, and so on. you can see they get larger and larger. Let's do one last quick example before finishing the video. Take the following formula. Now we have three distinct atomic components here, so we'll set up the truth table like this. Fill in our basis columns. Eight rows. like so. The main connective is the arrow there, so we'll need to know the values for the column under the negation of the H and the disjunction. So first thing I'll do is just copy over uh, the basis column for C, and then I'll invert the column for J under the hook next to the J. And now we're looking at those two columns to calculate the disjunction. And you notice the disjunction is true in every case except where both components are false. So a quick way to calculate disjunction is just to look for two falses. So we've got one true gives us a true, two trues, true, one true, true, another pair of trues. Here we have two falses, we get a false. One true gives us a true, two falses gives us a false and a true gives us a true. Now I'll invert the column under the H because we're going to need that value to calculate the value of the whole. And looking at the arrow again, remember the arrow is also false in only one case and that is where we've got true antecedent false consequent. So that actually occurs in the first row, we get a false. The second row, we get a false. Two trues will give us a true. Again, two trues, both false, gives us a true. On the third to last row, we've got a true antecedent false consequent. 
false antecedent gives us a true, and both true give us a, us a true. So we box the column under the main connective, and we're done. As you can see, once you get practiced at it, doing complete truth tables is not terribly difficult. That's basically all we have to cover in this video. In the next video, we are going to see how to use the truth table method to determine various properties of individual formulas, pairs of formulas, sets of formulas, and arguments.